After watching this video, you will know how to use every ability found on a character card and how they affect the game in Disney's Lorcana, the first chapter. Hello Rebels, and welcome to the place for any and all info on Lorcana. Now we're going to start right off with the first ability here. Now we have our uh, Amber, kind and gentle, or gentle and kind Cinderella. There's this little weird floating thing there. I don't remember that from the movie, but it's also been so long since I've seen it. Uh, but the important thing here we have is her ability, Singer 5. Now, essentially what Singer allows a character to do is to sing a song at a higher cost than their own, as determined by the number in the ability. Now, since she is Singer 5, she could sing a song that is a cost of 5 or lower uh, by turning her sideways or exerting her instead of four like her number would normally allow her to do. Now, the next ability we have here is Challenger. For Challenger, our, first up we got our classic steel uh, Forceful Duelist Captain Hook. This is a staple card to have in any steel deck for early game plays. And one of the main reasons why is because of his ability, Challenger. Now, uh, Challenger allows you to deal extra damage when challenging, but this does not affect damage when being challenged. So, if I were to target an opponent's card, I would deal 1 plus 2 from his Challenger for a total of 3 damage to the opponent. But then if an opponent attacks my Captain Hook card, he would only deal 1 damage back. So this only works when he himself is challenging. Now, the next character ability we have here is... Reckless. Now we got our uh, arrogant hunter Gaston. You know, no one fights like Gaston. I'm, I'm actually surprised that's not a song in the game, but I'm sure it will be if they uh, have more cards from Beauty and the Beast in this set. But uh, the interesting thing about Gaston, and you'll notice is uh, instantly different from, let's say, Captain Hook here, is Captain Hook, even though he can challenge, you can choose to quest him for one point or one lore. Gaston, on the other hand, does not have any points he can score, and that is because Reckless makes it so that a character cannot quest and must challenge if able. So it's not a, you can just choose not to use him when he's up there. If there is a target card or an opponent's card that you can target uh, in a challenge, you have to do it with him. So it can be quite useful depending on uh, if you want to put a card out there and deal with uh, an opponent's card that's kind of absorbing quite a bit of damage. Uh, and you don't have to worry about him missing out on points that he might be questing for. Now, the next ability that we're going to talk about, and a, a pretty good one, is Bodyguard. Now, we have our true hero Hercules here. And it's uh, actually kind of cool, because if you watch the movie, you'll know this is the outfit that uh, he's getting painted on at about the halfway part. With uh, the Scar cameo. Uh you could say of sorts, uh, which is kind of like the cape that he's wearing there. And another cool little detail is he has the steel symbol on his shield there, uh, which is, you know, the color card that he is. Now, what Bodyguard does is when an opponent challenges one of your characters, they must target the Bodyguard first. And they uh, have to target the Bodyguard if they're exerted. They can't do it if you don't do anything with a Bodyguard. Uh, but that's why, specifically for Bodyguards, when you play them, you can have them start exerted sideways. So that way they can start protecting your other characters right from the get-go. Now, the next character ability that we're going to talk about is Shift. Now we have a Powers Unleashed Genie. A uh, little cool artwork here. And something to know about Shift is that it is found... Uh, only going to be found, so far, on Floodborne characters. as That is their kind of unique ability when it comes to, like, the lore of the game itself. Now, what Shift allows you to do is, instead of having to pay 8 ink to play this card, let's say that this Hercules is a different genie card that I have in play, I can instead pay 6 to shift him on top of that card. Now, you'll keep any damage the previous card had, so if my previous genie had 2 damage on him, this genie would as well but it also comes in dry. Uh, no need to wait a turn to play his ability, so as soon as I shift him in, I can start using some of his other abilities and questing with him. So that is uh, very useful for strategy-wise, whether you want to shift it in or play it and wait. 
Now, the next character card type that we are going to talk about, or character ability, is support. Now, when, uh, well, we have our, uh, Merlin here from the Sapphire deck, self-appointed mentor. A uh, little funny thing about this card is I, I actually have two foils of this card. You know, there's 204 cards in the game, and of course, you know, I have to draw a duplicate foil. But, uh, nice little piece of artwork on it, at least, and the foil does look cool. Uh, but what support allows you to do is, when this character quests, they will add their strength to another character's strength for this turn only. Which means uh, it's only useful if you plan on challenging with a different character. So if I quest with Merlin, and I have my uh, genie card here, I can add three strength to genie's current strength of three for a total of six. So if I were to then challenge with this genie card, he'd deal six damage instead of just three. So that's uh, some usefulness with support cards when you want to do a mixture of questing and challenging. Now the next ability I'm going to talk about is Rush. Now we have our Ruby Fearless Fighter Peter Pan here, another great piece of artwork. Uh, just really pops as... Uh, I just really like the artwork of this card, I can't even really explain why. Just maybe the angle, whatever they did. Uh, but... Uh, he is special because he has the Rush ability, which means it allows the card to dry instantly if used to challenge. So for all other cards, when you play them, uh, besides shifting, they have to wait a turn before you can use them. With the Rush ability, if you're, you know, trying to clear out the opponent's board before they can score enough points to win, and you want to do it quickly, uh, you can, with this character, rush them and instantly challenge another character. Now, you can't put it forward in quest and score points. It's only for challenging. Now, the next ability that we're going to talk about, and quite possibly what many people consider to be the most broken or powerful ability in this game, is evasive. Now, here we have uh, Ursula Spy Jetsam, which is from the Amethyst deck here. Uh, just a little simple piece of artwork here. Uh, but what makes him really special is his ability evasive. Now, what evasive means is that the card can only be challenged by other cards that have the evasive ability. So it allows you to quest and score points without having to worry about him being killed. Uh, there's quite a few cards in this game that are highly valuable because of the evasive ability alone. And something to note for evasive, though, is while it's very difficult to challenge the card, any card that targets a card for damage, like Fire the Cannons, uh, can still target and deal damage to him. Now, the last card type that we're going to talk about here is Ward. Now, for Ward, it's kind of the opposite of Evasive. A character who is warded can only be targeted by a challenge. So any card like Fire the Cannons cannot target Donald Duck. And that's everything you will find on every uh, character card in Disney's Lorcana the first chapter. Now, if you're looking for other videos on Lorcana, please check out the playlist or video here. And until next time, have fun and game on.